Hey guys and gals, Never here from Drake Wing Gaming, and some of you on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with another, with another Let's Play episode of CNE. I, I, I know I'm mispronouncing that, y'all. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Alright, alright. <clears throat> hey there, kitty. I hear you're on your own for a few days. If you need a shoulder to cry on, we can go out somewhere. You know my number. Call me, Eli. I can barely read that thing, but it makes me chuckle. He always finds a way to brighten my day. Elias and I have been friends since childhood. He had already been working as the delivery guy long before I was hired by Anna, by Anna to work here. We've had trouble meeting up, since he now lives with his father, and I don't think that man likes me very much. Before I can dwell on that, though, I hear the old woman cough. Loudly. I eventually find the stack of today's newspapers. I place them next to the cash register. Here you go, ma'am. She glances at what I brought with disgust, tossing some of the newspapers to the side as she looks through the pile. Nothing good. I guess I'll take the Super Express. All right, here you go, ma'am. Thank you. She nods at me and pulls out her wallet while I conclude the price of the newspaper in the total. That will be 15 Zlich. And 59 gro Grozzi. Grozzi. I definitely know I'm mispronouncing those two words. She just hands me the exact amount as if she'd already counted how much it cost beforehand. Not that I complain, because it makes my job easier. Thank you for your purchase. Have a nice day. She nods without saying anything and heads out the door. Finally alone and in peace, time to take care of some unpacking business. There are plenty of items on the shelves that need to be re that need to be restocked. Everyday household items like soaps, shampoos, paper towels, and stationery. And then, tucked away in the corner of the storeroom, a peculiar box filled with an array of bizarre-looking trinkets. I'm pretty sure that's for Anna's curio section. I look at the door to that part of the shop. It's always funny to me that she sets it she sets it here of all places. All those religious folks coming in to buy some hot buns only to see Anna selling occult trinkets and offering tarot tarot readings. Priceless. The day proceeds smoothly. There are customers here and there between my restocking. At times, I even manage to forget about the bull, the bull, but that thought always comes back. With the shop now empty, it's time for some shopping of my own. Not being that hungry, I only grab some essentials, potatoes, bread, ham, and some cheese. As I scan to, as I scan to pay for my items, the door chime rings. Four men enter, dressed in rather dapper attire. I don't think I've seen them before. Welcome! My eyes are drawn to one of them, a wolf with scars across his face and a missing eye. Another one, a deeper, a deer, approaches the counter while the rest are looking around. How can I help? We're looking for someone. Okay, who? We were told this is his shop. Something isn't right. This is Anna's shop. I try to keep my gaze focused on the man in front of me, but in the corner of my eyes, I see the rest of them wandering all around the shop, making me nervous. Other guy, a wolf, goes back to the storeroom. As I raise my hand to call out to him, the guy in front of me just shakes his head and snaps his fingers at me. I'm talking to you. Who the fuck are these people? Pay attention. Sorry. So, we're looking for Otto Oginski. Oh, they're looking for Otto, Anna's brother. You seen him? Despite their fancy appearance, they emanate a really ominous vibe. Yeah, probably mob. I need to decide how to handle it. I've no idea who these people are. Hey, what are you at gawking at? Answer the question. The wolf approaches the deer, laying his hand on the deer's shoulder. Hmm. Calm down. Let the boy speak. I'm out of time. Make up a lie. Oh, this can go very badly for me. Um... That's the thing, though. I don't know who these guys are, because these guys could be good. Oh, well, I don't know. That guy's got an awful lot of bruises around his knuckles. That tells me a lot. Oh, that's actually a good detail, too. Hmm, interesting. I'll make up a lie. Better safe than sorry. If I'm about to ruin some deal Otto has with them, I will apologize to him later. But if it's, in tr but if it's trouble, it's better to play dumb. And that's something I'm good at. I just have to make sure I don't overdo it. I smile wide and stretch my arms behind my back. Who? Nah, bro, I, like, barely know anyone here. I feel his icy gaze lock on me as I speak. Some bear chick hired me a few days ago to cover for her. Come on, buy the act. Just for a few days. Need some quick cash, you know? What was her name? Uh, wait, don't tell me. I got it. Uh, Hannah? Anna. Yeah, that one. I, I met her at a party. She's cool. But you're not looking for Hannah, right? Anna. Oh, yeah, yeah, Anna, right. Uh, listen, I just met her at a party. I guess I mentioned needing some cash, and she said I could cover for her here. The deer sighs while the wolf smiles. The rest of the men are paying close attention to my performance, too. It's hard to tell if they're actually buying the whole thing. Sorry, but I can't help you more, bro. I almost jump as the door opens again. A hyena, a hyena enters. Is that Elias? I can't get distracted. 
But, but, wait. Anna left me her number. I mean, Anna left me her number. The deer's gaze gets more intense the more he looks at me. Almost like he's reading me. You want it? No, you imbecile. We're looking for the owner of the establishment. Otto, go Otto Oginski. Well, I don't know what to tell you, man. I only know him. I mean, Anna. I don't think I met any autos at that party. Fuck's sake, are you dense? The deer looks like he's about to snap. His scarred hand closes into a fist. The wolf steps closer, grabbing the deer by the arm while shaking his head. Fair enough. Even I would want to punch myself at this point. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but hey, bro. A hyena steps closer, and I finally pay proper attention to him. Except it's not Elias, and I'm left staring in disbelief. Daweed is back. Uh, how did you say it? Daweed? Daweed? I don't say Daweed. Daweed is back. He approaches me and extends his fist for a fist bump. That party was on fire! I nod at the hyena. An old friend? A former friend? I don't even know what he, what he is to me anymore, but for the sake of keeping up the act, I follow his lead with a fist bump. Sure was! The wolf looks at both of us before speaking with a gentle cadence. I see. <sighs> Sorry to take your time. No worries. We're all friends here. I extend my fist to the wolf for a fist bump. The man just looks down at it and turns to leave. Hopefully they bought it. With David's help, that should be convinced. I learned nothing from those guys, and I hope Otto is in some deep shit. He isn't one to look for trouble. The wolf beckons to the, the wolf beckons the rest to follow, like a pack the men gather up near the door. If you see Otto, tell him we're looking for him. He'll know what that means. After saying that, they all leave. Wow, acting class. Wow, acting class is much. <laughs> I think they bought it. I'm not so sure about that. Oh, I'd have, I'd have bought it. With a wide smile on his face, he steps closer. Tom, I'm so happy to see you again. It's been years. Nothing comes out of my mouth. I just stare at him, almost like I'm seeing a ghost that's been haunting my mind for years. Tom, hey, are you there? Seeing him with his round doe, with his round doe eyes and dumb-looking smile somehow makes my blood begin to boil. It's been six years. I gently massage my temple, trying to quell the burning sensation that has crawled up my head. Before it goes too far and erupts from my mouth into a fiery speech at David. Six years since you left without a word. Yeah. A lingering silence envelops both of us as we look at each other, except for the incessant tapping of my fingertips on the counter. Seeing him again should make me happy, but I feel nothing like that. Man, I I'm sorry, but I couldn't really be in touch. Uh, family stuff. Are you kidding me? Family stuff? That's a terrible excuse, especially when you ignored Elias, too. After David left, without a word, I had no idea what happened. Nobody would tell me anything. His father only mentioned that David left for Germany with his mother. Otherwise, I would have ended up thinking he was yet another disappearance. Are you getting mad at me over my brother? Of course I'm mad at you over him. You hurt him. Fuck, Eli fuck, Elias just shrugged it off and said he deserved it, but I know it hurt him. In truth, Elias spoke very little about this whole thing. Hell, I practically had to pry him, pry him open so he'd talk to me. All he could talk about was the rest of his family and that he didn't want to abandon his father. I mean, the choice to stay with your dad was his. Ugh, you're impossible. Uh, I went with Mom because she needed me. Elias stayed with, da with Dad because he was needed here. We both made a choice. It was easier that way. Easier? Your brothers! Your parents' divorce shouldn't stop you from keeping in touch. I couldn't. What? David's chest puffs up as he clenches his jaw. A short, dejected sigh escapes his mouth. I just couldn't stay in contact, okay? I don't want to argue about that right now. I just wanted to see you. Fuck you. You don't get to say that. Tom, I I'm sorry. Sorry? That day felt like I lost both of my friends. You were just gone. And Elias changed. He was cold. Distant. Anna and Otto were still here, but it wasn't the same. After I left for uni, things just moved on. I, I didn't hear from either of you. How did you think that felt? Probably won't count for much, but I'm really sorry. But I'm back now. Can I ask you something? Uh, sure. Why are you here? Uh, would it be hard to believe if I said I came back to fix what I broke? And win my friends back? What if your friends moved on and didn't need you anymore? I guess I'll keep trying to regain their trust. I stared deep into his eyes to sense any hint of deception. They say the eyes never lie, but David has always been good at lying. What about Elias? Was he happy to see you? You're not going to let this one go, are you? Not really, no. Well, I haven't talked to him yet. What? The hyena sighs deeply. I will, though. I suppose, I suppose I'm just unsure how to do this after so long. 
Well, you've never been one to back down from an adventure. D did he talk to you after you came back? Yeah, he technically works as our delivery guy now. Oh. Yeah. Alright, well, um, don't get mad, but after I met Elias, if he'd even want to see me... Uh, do you want to go out somewhere with me? Uh, catch up and all. I'm kind of exhausted today. I, I just want to know more about what you've been up to. Uh, the gist of it, at least. I'll pay for the food, and you can order whatever you like. Before I can respond, a new customer enters. David's ears perk up. Welcome. Let me know if you need anything. The customer nods, taking a few things quickly, quiet, apart from a thank you and a goodbye. Meanwhile, meanwhile, David, uh, David, David, how do you say his name? Y'all in comments, tell me how you pronounce his name. David waits for him to finish before he turns to me again. Please say yes. I don't know if I want to deal with all that all that right now. And by that, I mean you. No point when you could just vanish again. Oh, right. No, I'm saying for good. My parents' old house is mine now, and there's not much left for me in Germany. Well, Mom's old house. Huh? I'm gonna tell you more if you agree to meet me tonight. He smiles like he's proud of his offer. I'm not promising anything. Alright, I'll talk to Eli first, and then I'll ask you again. Well, I'm glad at least you understand. Yeah, I gotcha. Mind if we exchange numbers? I nod and take his phone to tap out my number while he does the same on mine. I'll be hitting off then. I've got a lot of catching up to do. Hopefully we can see each other tonight. Maybe. David just smiles and gives me two finger guns, followed by some pew-pew sounds as he leaves. Watching him walk out and down the street through the dusty shop window makes me feel uneasy. Him being back at all, at all is surreal. I don't know what to make of his return. My mind races to search for some closure. His unexpected presence has stirred a mix of emotions within me like a storm brewing inside a cup of tea, yet I can't seem to grasp a single tangible emotion from it. Should I feel happy that he's finally back, or mad that he simply assumes he can slip back into our lives as if nothing had happened after he left? Regardless, perhaps the passage of time has carved a deep rift that separates David and me over all these years, making me feel detached from this whole situation. How does one even navigate the awkward terrain of our suddenly renewed connection, and is it even worth a try? Despite my lingering thoughts about what just happened, the rest of the day unfolds seamlessly. The flow of customers coming in and out blurs into a breathing tide that oscillates between the time of bustling activity and tranquil lulls. Every now and then, some guy coming in reminds me of that group of men looking for Otto, while the departure of another brings my thoughts back to David. David, whatever. The sky shifts into a darker hue, bringing along gusts of cold wind. I'm deeply fixated on a line of spruce trees outside waving at me. Some branches that sway and bend a bit too hard begin to snap with a resounding crackle. I pack my things and lock the shop, making sure to check everything one last time so I don't leave anything behind. I look up at the rolling mass of gray clouds looming overhead. The wind is now tugging at loose, loose leaves and tousling my fur. With my house now inside, I'm surprised to see a giant softie of a bear sitting on my front stairs. Is he, here to talk about, is he here to talk because of what happened at the shop earlier? Shit. Either way, we exchange smiles as Otto lifts himself up and dusts his pants off. Oh, wow. He's cute. hey -o, Tom. He extends his paw for a handshake. I look at him, then at his hand, confused. Why so formal? Oh, um, sorry. Otto just smiles awkwardly, clearly embarrassed. Hey, you're fine, big guy. I was just joking. I grab his paw with mine and we exchange a handshake the size of this man, my hand just disappears. Have you been waiting long? Not long. He puts his hands in his pockets and then pulls them out, folding them on his chest. Is everything okay? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I mean... Alright, I'm gonna pause it right there, y'all. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm gonna give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank y'all for I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. And thank you to our gold tier patron, Terezum Guy. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye